Oh, Halo's Gaming here uh, with something a little out of my usual production line, uh, something that I want to start doing more often. Uh, if you want to see more of these, uh, please let me know in the comments right away. Uh, it will make things, it'll make, it'll incentivize me to make more of these. Anyways, what this is, is we're going to do a patch notes kind of overview and what is happening with the current change of EVE Online, because 3.8's a big patch. I'm super excited about it for a lot of reasons. And uh, I've already read the patch notes, so you're not going to get my like initial like... But I got some things that I want to point out, and I'm super excited about these patch notes. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to wake up and record right away. Uh, I, I, I had to wake up, go to work, and I couldn't contain myself to read the patch notes before going to work. And then my Discord was talking about it, so... Without further ado, uh, patch notes uh, 20.03. Uh, I'm not going to read it verbatim, word for word. Uh, we're just going to kind of go down the list and uh, go through things. Uh, the first thing that was noted is that we have uh, a slightly new audio engine, uh, updated music and sound effects for the MPE, and default auto audio level for world sounds. Uh, sounds like it was increased a little bit. So like kind of background chirps and sounds that the game makes by default will be slightly higher. That's a setting that's really easy to change in game. Um, we got some ship balancing. Um, and this is extremely cool. I know it doesn't look like a big patch, but this is really cool. On all battleships, except for the pra Praxises, this includes Marauders. This includes all the faction holes. This includes all the pirate holes. All the tier two, or so Marauders, uh, Black Ops, I believe it'll also include the Marshal. Um, basically, every single battleship, excluding the Praxis, is going to get this roll bonus added to it. And uh, it's going to be 50% bonus to HP from all armor plates, 100% bonus to HP from all shield extenders, and a 5% added additive bonus to reinforced bulkhead modules. Um, and I love the note that they put in here for those with discerning taste with whole tanks. Uh, this is going to make a lot of fits uh, or all the battleships a lot more bulkier, if that makes sense. So they'll all have more EHP and they'll turn more into like brawly kind of let's brawl uh, kind of things rather than uh, them needing to move fast. They'll have a lot of extra. They're trying to give them more bulk so that they're viable in combat and they don't just get alpha by the bigger bigger boys too, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, the EHP numbers that we'll be seeing on battleships are going to be remarkable, for lack of a better term. And uh, I can't wait to see how this affects meta with uh, one for shields. Uh, shield tanks, uh, the EHP bonus on shield extenders affects greatly how much shield recharge they get for the uh, for the shield for passive shield recharge. Uh, Increased HP on armor plates is huge too. Uh, armor fits already were extremely bulky. They're going to be even more so bulky than before. And then hull tanks uh, going from 25 to 30% on each bulkhead is going to be a big deal. I'm super excited for that for things like hull tank dummies and uh, hull tank megas. Uh, there's actually a few hull tank battleships that are fun. Uh, anyways, uh, so we have a module uh, rebalancing as well. Uh, this is uh, a re -indition, or a uh, take back from Surgical Strike that happened in 2020. Uh, basically, uh, the TLDR of this uh, is kind of uh, explained here. We get a uh, an EMR hardener uh, before Surgical Strike had 40% uh, after or 50% resists, and after Surgical Strike had 40% resists, now it has 45. So they're kind of putting it right in the middle, and then at the same time that they did the uh, surgical strike they did tier side on modules so there's going to be uh for the name modules uh like um i think it's membrane one the uh the named ones that have different cpu and power grid requirements to be kind of in between tech one and tech two uh they got tier sided so the effects are going to be a little bit different so before surgical strike with 32 post surgical uh surgical strike was 26 and then 27.77 uh, but now it's 31.24. Uh, so they've changed things a bit in a weird way with some of those. Uh, but the TLDR of this bit is that all of the hardeners in the game are going to get better. Uh, that is everything except for damage controls and 
reactive armor hardeners uh, are going to get better. And I'm excited to see how this affects a lot of things uh, in like every instance of the game. This has a huge impact. A lot of uh, my burner fits are going to become safer uh, and or cheaper. A lot of PvE fits will be able to be made more efficient. Uh, PvP fits will survive longer in battle. Uh, what was required to make a tank survive a certain thing is going to take less modules or just going to make tanking better. And uh, I'm excited to see the end result of this uh, as it develops in the meta because this affects everybody from the smallest frigate to the biggest capital ship. Um, and it is in a positive manner for the PvE side. PvP might be a little different. Capitals are definitely going to be a lot bulkier, so they'll be a lot harder to kill, which is going to be interesting. And then, of course, this uh, adds on to this battleship bonus of the HP, so the battleships are really getting buffed here. Uh, and then the large micro jump drive is getting uh, its power grid and CPU requirement reduced. Uh, this is good for battleships, because battleships are the ones that use the large micro jump drive. Um, and the large micro jump drive is a fantastic module. Uh, being able to fit easier on a ship allows you to fit it with more things. So you, uh, doing dual prop with the micro jump drive will become easier than it was before. This may in fact make me able to not use a power diagnostic on my Varger, because uh, it has micro jump drive, micro warp drive, extra large shield booster, and artillery, uh, which is a lot of power grid. It needs a power diagnostic to get that last 5%. That uh, 800 to 1375, I think it's 575, meaning that might be enough to fix my power grid issue. Uh, and then the CPU need is also reduced. This will, again, help with fitting damage modules and tanking modules on the ships. Uh, it just kind of makes fitting the micro jump drive a little bit easier, which is awesome. Uh, they added new reflections, uh, which is what this graphics is, and improved the texture quality of asteroids. Kind of interested to see this, uh, because this, <laughs> spoiler alert, this patch has a huge emphasis on mining. Uh, even coming up to this has an emphasis on mining as well. Um, we're getting uh, an industrial reconfiguration skill, uh, and they've been added to NPC markets for all 12 schools, uh, so they're easy to acquire. Uh, they're not going to be the limited way that they are. Uh, and we're going to get uh, a medium indie core uh, that uses the same amount of fuel as the large. I actually read the numbers already. Uh, but the medium core is going to be slightly less effective. I think I looked at it and... Um, yeah, so it's just slightly less effective than the uh, large core and the extra large core because it's medium. And I can't remember exactly where I figured that out. Uh, but the TLDR of this is that we are getting a, um, the attributes, oh, I haven't looked at this yet. Anyway, so let's see, Tech 1 fitting attributes and details. It's for the new medium industrial core 1 uh, attribute details. Uh, we will be getting, it gets a 7.5% bonus to the boost strength, if I remember reading correctly. Uh, where's this at? It is duration, remote assistance. Uh, that's a bonus to anti-e-war. And then it consumes heavy water. Uh, the duration is 75 seconds rather than the duration. This is actually going to consume more heavy, or actually the base consumption is 125. So it's going to go down with skills. 100% uh, ECM resistance is going to be really nice. I'm trying to find out where it is. The command mining form and burst range. Mining firm and burst strength for tier one is going to be 5%. And then for tier two, it should be 7.5%. And a few other things are stronger as well. Uh, the LO or the heavy water consumption is going to go up to 250 units. Uh, but that's base. Uh, so that's half of what it's actually half of what the Orca costs. And I believe this strength bonus is 7.5%. And then uh, we're getting compressors, uh, which will allow you to compress the uh moon ore and asteroid ore uh which is awesome and then also mercoxic ice and gases and moon ores are going to be compressible in these which is huge for mining I, I i can't even begin to state how useful being able to compress ice gas and moon ore is and then also all asteroid ores including the ore and pochvin uh, will be compressible uh, they added compression to the Pochman Ore 101, which is what I was really hoping for. 
and that's noted down here. Uh, the attribute uh, mining residual volume multiplier uh, residual probability has been added to the following modules with a value of zero for each attribute. Habitat miner and the uh, wild miner. This is a very minor thing. They just added something so that uh, it's comparable to the other modules. So you can see that it's zero instead of uh, just not having it. Uh, makes it a little bit easier. Uh, compression is now a more social uh, thing. Uh, again, looking at the compression modules here. Um, will allow for nearby fleet mates to be able to instantly compress their own harvested resources. So you can compress it in your Hulk, in your Orca, in your Mackinac, whatever, as long as you have the support ship on grid. Uh, and it looks like uh, ranges of over 200 kilometers are possible, so your entire fleet will be able to do that. Uh, gas and moon ore are now compressible using these new modules. Uh, the porpoise can now compress gas and asteroid ore, and both the orca and the work wall can compress all resources. Uh, so the orca being able to compress ice is fantastic for mining and ice belts. Uh, gas decompression is a thing, and it will be lossless, and the capacity of jet cans has been doubled. This is big for... Um, this is really big for, for mining ships. Uh, the new blueprints uh, will be findable in all the NPC stations. Uh, so the prices will probably be really high today. And then over a couple of days, they'll fall in line with where they want them to be with the material costs. Uh, medium can compress gas and asteroid. Large can large and capital can compress everything. Um, and then we kind of looked at uh, these modules here. We just kind of dozed over them. Uh, but basically, you'll fit them into a high slot on your ship or on your Porpoise, Orca, or Raquel. And then uh, everybody in your fleet that's within range of the effect will be able to uh, compress the ore. Um, there's an update to the mechanics of residue and yield involved with mining that has been made. I read this and I smiled gleefully when I read this line. Mining yield is now removed from the resource prior to mining residue being removed. So before how it worked is the mining residue was taken into account before the ore got taken out. So mining residue happened before the ore. So if you had 5, 000, or 503 left in a rock and you cycled 503 of a Tech 2 mining laser on it and you got the residue chance, you would get 0 and 3 out of it. Now if you mine even you know 800, 900, 2500 out of the cycle you were going to get that 503 out of the rock without the residue happening. So you'll never kill a rock and not get ore, which was something I found infuriating with mining. Um, this will increase the yield of Tech 2 mining significantly in high sec, but not as much in low and null uh, where the rocks are bigger. So this has a bigger impact on smaller rocks than on bigger rocks. And I'm going to tell you right now as an Orca pilot, or as a Hulk pilot that multi-boxes, I'm extremely ecstatic about this. Uh, this is going to make mining a lot better. Uh, older compressed resources are now called batch compresses, uh, resources in getting older compression method that was used. Uh, compressed variations in moon ore are now available at a ratio of 101. So all moon ore, 101. You can fit a lot of moon ore at 100 to 1. That is exciting. I was worried that they might do 50 to 1, 20 to 1, or even 10 to 1 like ice, which is interesting. Uh, I would like to see that they changed ice, but ice has been 10 to 1 forever and all the ore has been 100 to 1. So this kind of is in line with things that rocks compress more than ice. Uh, the abyssal ores, uh, the Bezendine, Rakavine, Talisanite that comes out of Pochvin are also compressing at 101, which is really good news for those that want to mine in Pochvin, as extracting the, the the big thing that kept me from mining in Pochvin is getting the ore out of Pochvin. <laughs> so this is this this is huge uh, for logistics being able to uh, go in the field and uh, take ore out of Pochvin. So mining in Pochvin is going to be an insanely lucrative thing that you can do now uh, with being able to uh, get it out easily. Uh, compressed gas is available in 10 to 1, uh, which is interesting that they chose 10 to 1 for gas. Um, and then compressed asteroid ore, again, uh, batch compressed asteroid ore is no longer able to be created, but still can be traded refined. Uh, compressed ice has been added. The new compression ratio is 10 to 1. Ice has always been 10 to 1 when you compress it in a station. Um, but that is awesome that we can now compress 10 to 1. Uh, I think that they changed what they're called a little bit. Um when they compress. We'll have to look at that in game and I'll be doing that in another video. Uh, actually seeing these in game. 
Uh, the the porpoise, uh, we got a ship rebalance on the porpoise and as a fuel bay of 4,800. Uh, and we'll get a um, reduction in ice and uh, ice harvesting cycle time for drones and drone or mining yield 10%. So the porpoise is getting better mining. And then the 5% range to the mining performance boost uh, per skill level of the orca has been added. The orca also has uh, orca fuel bay. Uh, is increased to 6,400 from five from uh, 500 or 6,400 to from 5,000, uh, which is really helpful. Having that little bit of extra fuel uh, allows you to stay in field for an additional. I believe it's 20 minutes, making a nice round two hours. I believe I I would have to double check the math on that to see exactly how long that is. But this is nice for mining because the orca can stay in the field longer with the with a boost running or the foreman running longer. Um, the Raquel also has a 5% bonus to mining form and burst range has been made visible to the traits tab in the ship. Uh, the uh, Apethel, uh, Apethel uh, now has a command center bay uh, available with the capacity of 6,000. Uh, that is enough, that is large enough to fit the, uh, fit that is not large enough to hold six command centers. That's kind of helpful. And then there was uh, the skills uh, added, uh, shipboard compression technology. Skill enables the uh, or uh, material compression technology. Each level unlocks specialized compress compressor modules for use on subcapital ships equipped with industrial cores. Uh, capital shipboard compression technology. This advanced skill enables shipboard operation or new materials compression. Each level unlocks specialized compressors for uh, use of capital ships. And then we have gas decompression efficiency. Uh, this skill improves the efficiency of decompression process for converting compressed and harvestable gases into form of usable industrial resources. Um, each level improves efficiency and reduces decompression losses by 1%. This is conflicting to me because I just read here that uh, decompression would be lossless. Um, right up here. I remember reading that when they added... I can just control F and then go lossless, lossless. Uh, gas decompression is now available uh, by stand-up resource. Compression continues to be lossless, but then we have this skill, which re reduces decompression losses by 1%. I'm not quite sure with this. This, this might be a uh, gas decompression. It said it's going to be lossless. But then we have a skill that in gas is now available in upwell by stand-up reprocessing facility. Compression continues to be lossless. Oh, compression is lossless. Decompressing has loss. And then this reduces loss. Uh, fleet compression logistics increases the range of the compression. Uh, the support skill increases the range at which fleet members can use fleet compression service offered by the ship operating in the, in the industrial core and compressor technology. Each level increases uh, by 10%. Uh, the range of the industrial core ship within which fleet compression can be used with fleet members. So if you have a base of 50, you have this train to one, it will go to 55. Simple stuff like that. Uh, Toterra's to uh, base reprocessing efficiency bonus has been increased from, from 4 to 5.5%. That's big. Uh, so refining it in Toterra is going to be a lot better than refining it in Athenor. Uh, and then the Athenor gas decompression bonus is set to 4. Toterra's uh, gas decompression bonus is set to 10. Uh, so refining in a Tatera is significantly better than refining in an Athenor. However, Tateras are really expensive, so it's going to be a thing. Uh, I'm not really sure much about these custom offices. Uh, there's been a, uh, several quality of life updates made to deployment and conflicts surrounding player-owned uh, custom offices, POCOs. Custom office gantry is now globally visible when deployed in the solar system and can be directly warped to. Displaying a custom office gantry now uses the standard day's range check when checking its distance close to a planet. Previously, you could deploy gantries at a very large distance to a planet. Now the radius has been reduced and the deployment range around the planet is now tighter. Aggression against custom office gantry in high sec is now a suspect act rather than a criminal. So you can engage a customs office without getting concorded. That sounds good. Uh, the maximum shield hit points at custom of, uh, custom office gantries has been reduced from 10 million to 500. That is one twentieth. That is significantly less. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what that means. Uh, as I don't play with Pocos much, I do know uh, that BRMB is really excited about this particular one. Um, the onlining and unanchoring delay of customs office gantries have both been increased to 15 minutes. Uh, customs office gantry attribute changes. 
Uh, it was 30 seconds, now it's 15 minutes apparently. And the online delay was five seconds, now it's 15 minutes. So it looks like it went from 35 seconds to 30 minutes, which is a big thing. Uh, the Crab, uh, the Concord Rogue Analysis Beacon Blueprint has been reduced, has it, has had a reduction in its cost uh, in the Concord LP store. Uh, the reduced uh, to 9,000 per five rung blueprint copy from 20,000. Uh, additionally, the average drops of the rogue infestation uh, data found inside the crab upon completion has been increased. So not only are crabs gonna be easier to produce, they're going to be more valuable. Uh, and that is awesome uh, for those that want to make crabs, use crabs and be around crabs. Um, we all know low sec and null sec crabs love these things. Um, user interface, a fitting warning is now being displayed when fitting undersized modules. So if you fit like a medium gun onto a battleship, it'll give you a warning. Uh, new compression window is now presented with players who are using the compression action. Uh, this new window has been designed to be as fast as possible to interact with, allowing for quick and easy compression of resources. I'm looking forward to actually seeing this in game and I'm like super stoked about this. This is probably gonna be great. Uh, it is opened after choosing to compress resources, allowing you to use the input output and choose to go ahead with compression or cancel. There's no drag and drop functionality in order to keep the window as simple as possible. A new decompression window is now available for decompressing gas. The window is available by right clicking and attempting to de decompress a stack of any compressed gas. Uh, the decompression of gas is uh, lossy. The yield values apply in the, in the calculation are presented in the window. Uh, as the decompression of gases lossy, the yield values are uh, presented in the window. Structure efficiency and uh, current skill levels apply uh, for, I guess, decompression, refinement, and um, other and yeah, de decompression and refinement, uh, which I believe would be when you're docked up. Symbol for the different categories is now available for uh, symbol for different categories is now visible for corporation skill plans. Uh, I haven't really played a lot with skill plans, uh, but this is definitely exciting. Uh, new player experience. Uh, they launched a second chapter of uh, the Air New Player Experience, deepening the narrative through the exciting mining gameplay journey. Read the details about this experience in the dev blog. I'll have to be playing through this at least once. Uh, the experience is an opt-in and therefore can be skipped at any time by players. The experience is, access, uh, is accessible to new characters only. So I'll have to make a character to check this out. Uh, defect fixes uh, gameplay, address an issue where ice belts are not correctly completing after the belt is depleted. Uh, this time we mean it. <laughs> this is funny because <laughs> they've tried to fix this a lot of times. For a while they were not spawning because there was a, a tier 2 laser broke it and then they weren't spawning in, in Galente for a while. So I guess they fixed it finally. Uh, ships with an active siege uh, Siege triage or industrial core module will now be correctly blocked from jumping through a wormhole. So if you are sieged on a wormhole, uh, you cannot go through the wormhole. So Marauder and whatnot brawling on wormholes uh, is probably not going to be as common as it was. Um, and that was a uh, thing that was easily abused uh, to do various things. Uh, but this is a good change. Uh, cloning, clone jumping from an up upwell structure now works correctly. I'm not sure why clone jumping was broken from an upwell structure. Uh, I'm not sure what this line means because uh, I believe clones have been working fine this whole time. Uh, skipping the MPE, MPE will have uh, the a new character's Corvette correctly fit with the mining laser. Uh, turrets fitted to the wings of the pacifier no longer clip uh, into it during warp. Uh, these are graphics changes. Appropriate reflections of dynamic light and sunlight are now displaying Properly in small crevices of ships and structures. I'm going to be interested to see what that ends up uh, creating graphics-wise um, and how intense that is on the GPU. Uh, user interface, fix, a, uh, fix an issue or intrusion of the main bank and encounter surveillance system would show up under reserve bank in the agency. Fix an issue causing F11 map to close when using control tab to hide all windows. Interesting. Fix an issue that could cause the industry preview window to occasionally overlap with, overlap with other industry preview windows. Add a message when trying to deploy a command center from a structure. Add a notification to the multi-sale window to warn capsulars that when they try to sell multiple items to the personal assets uh, window from multiple locations. Uh, address an issue with the time to payment 
uh, time for main bank to the agency, which in some instances was not correctly showing sh short and long times until payout. Fix an issue where the accept and withdrawal buttons from the corporation invitation in my applications tab were missing. That's interesting. Fix an issue where the agent mission buttons in the info panel were not showing correctly. And then fix an issue, cause an incorrect warning when adding filaments to a fitting. Might make adding filaments to a fitting really easily. So you dock up and you just hit fit ship on your fit again, and it will uh, restock your filaments from your inventory. It's not possible to drag character's name into the name field when creating a contract. That's nice. Being able to drag a character's name in and then not having to select the character makes creating contracts a little bit easier. Uh, that's patch notes. I'm super excited uh, for actual uh, development on battleships with this. Super excited for the hardener buff, which is huge, by the way. I can't wait to get into the game and check these out. Uh, but until next time, uh, these were patch notes uh, for March 3rd uh, or March 8th of 2022. Uh, if you like this video, again, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe down below. And uh, I will see you guys in the next one. Continue bringing each other up and enjoy your time gaming, everybody.